Hey guys, this is Mikro. This is going to be a guide to IGVG that is meant to come out earlier this week, but stuff happened, so it's coming up now. Uh, IGVG, if you if you want to play this as like a nuke damage build, like kind of want to pad and do like lots of damage, this is definitely not the ideal guide for you. But if you're like looking to be the best support player you can, which is how this build is typically slotted on with every company that is at the top of New World, then this is the guide that you want to be looking for. Uh, IGVG is only slotted at, with two different armor types at the moment. It is slotted in medium as a common as a common build in any sort of normal group, and it's slotted in heavy and deadly point. I typically, when I'm playing this build, play it in heavy either because I'm on deadly point or because I'm in a rule that requires me to live and I'll get more value by living, and heavy enables me to do that. But most people play in medium, and I think medium is generally best for, for most people to play along top of that. The base idea is you are kind of skirting around your bruisers, and you are trying to enable them and help them secure kills with your void gauntlet, and then you're using your ice gauntlet to help control space on the battlefield. So going into what is typically run uh, for void gauntlet, well, let me go over the perks first. Void gauntlet. Every single person runs a keen scream void gauntlet. The third perk is debatable. You run scream because it's 40% versus 29%, and the 40% is just significantly better. I prefer to do chain void because with void gauntlet, typically if you want max CDR, you're taking refreshing harvest, which is this perk right here that gives you 10% CDR per time you use harvest essence. But harvest essence has this like, if you look at the health bar, like when it's going down, it has this like kind of gap in between when it actually goes down and in order to maximize your cdr you usually want to eat into auto har refreshing harvest and auto refreshing harvest and auto if i say eat i mean refreshing harvest i use them interchangeably a lot uh, some people say that they're sucking themselves you could have fun with that it doesn't really matter but you get the idea there uh, that is used to get your cdr as low as possible and then they're going to use that to pump out more support abilities there are like two typical ways of playing this in EU, people are playing it as a super, they're stacking every single survivability perk because you already have good CDR, and you're just looking to live as long as possible and provide the natural CDR that the Void Gauntlet has. The Void Gauntlet has that CDR of Refreshing Harvest that I've already talked about. It has CDR from Refreshing Fertility, which is basically 15% cooldown reduction uh, every time you throw an orb, and then every time you detonate the orb, because those are two separate things, is also 15% every time you scream people if they have three or more debuffs. So that's a conditional like 45% per combo cycle. And then you also get CDR based on your crits. So basically, with the Void Gauntlet kit alone, you could have, near, you have good enough CDR to get away without running any refreshing. That being said, in NA, not in the EU, people tend to slot a lot of refreshing with this build. This is because of the Void Gauntlet tree, but it's also because this is almost always paired with Ice Gauntlet, which is what this video is about. And with Ice Gauntlet, the, the biggest carry ability is the Ice Shower, which is used all the time, and the lower you can get your Ice Shower cooldown, the better it is, because that's the more t or the less time people have to actually slip through gates and get in the doors. In NA, there are some people who run 9 refreshing, and have Ice Shower basically on like a 14 second cooldown or something crazy like that. And then on top of like uh, Refreshing Frost, you basically have no cooldown on your Ice Gauntlet. And when you do that, you gain Fortify, and that Fortify basically replaces that natural uh, shirking fort that you would have if you're playing the EU setup. EU people normally run 5 Brazil, 5 Freedom, and 5 Shirking Fort. And NA, on armor, this is, a, well, actually it's not 5 Brazil, 5 Freedom, 5 Shirking 4. It's 5 Brazil, 4 Freedom, 5 Shirking 4, and 1 Nullifying Oblivion perk. Nullifying Oblivion is the most powerful perk on Void Gauntlet, which I managed to not put my piece on, so I am glad I mentioned that before I went to war. This is my piece. Uh, I have a couple. I'll, I'll probably figure out which one I want to run. Um, But... They'll find Oblivion, what it does is it removes all debuffs on people, and then it additionally just makes it so that your army gets a bunch of buffs, so there's a 15% in power. 
there's a weaken that's associated with it if you hit people inside, although this is fairly common, uncommon to hit. Uh, but you can have it proc off of something like Scream or Orb if you really want to, but people normally do like a Scream into Oblivion into Orb, so the Orb sometimes will proc the weaken, but that's about it. And then the stamina regen is a really, really big thing. One thing that's unknown about Void Gauntlet to most people is if you drop this Oblivion, it will immediately give you 15 stam, and then it will start genning. So that's really good to get out of a pinch. Like, if you're low stam, dropping out Oblivion to get your stam back can save you a lot of times. So, heading off into, like, what you're looking for. Uh, I talked about E versus NA a little bit, but you're basically looking to maximize the Brazil. Uh, you almost always want 5 Brazil. I put 4 to 5 because some people think it's a debate. I think 4 Brazil is fine if you are on point as a Deddy player, but not as good if you're off point, which sounds counterintuitive, but it's because builds that tend to be played on Deddy point tend to not have a high crit damage modifier. What a crit damage modifier is, is like how much the, the crits will actually hit for, and Brazil counteracts that crit stuff. So if you have 4 Brazil, you're going to have a 1.3 crit damage modifier, like negation, and most weapons don't go above that, which is fine. And if they do go above that, they'll go above it rarely, so it's not that big of a deal to have 5, but if you have 5, it tends to be a little bit better. One Oblivion piece, because it's a must-have. Some people run Diminishing Orb, which is a perk that will reduce people's debuff duration, but not completely negate it. The problem with Diminishing Orb is it only applies to the actual orb itself, not the detonate part of the orb. So you run into situations where people think that they're actually stripping buffs, but they really aren't, and you have to keep your orb out for a long time. So if I want to hit like a clump that's like where this is, then I have to keep it and I have to detonate it basically at the very end in order for that to actually work. Alright, so I'm going to keep going down my checklist here. Uh, freedom is typically run on both servers, NA and EU. Freedom is really good at just getting you out of any sticky situation. It's basically been mandatory due to vines being popular as well as it negates gravel roots of root it, it helps you live, basically. And this is not a build that you'll want to be standing there and taking a lot of damage or kind of dancing around people and using your abilities and not really autoing ever unless you are going for Refreshing Harvest. And if you're going for rush, Refreshing Harvest, you're usually in a safe spate and you're just Refreshing Harvesting into auto. And you're just doing this over and over and that will give you max CDR, which will let you use more abilities, which will help your bruisers get kills and help you win the war. So that is typically what is run. Uh, this tree is pretty standard. For a while, people ran Radiant Efficiency and cut something like Forsaken Pack, but then people realized that if you run Mana Food and you are constantly playing for Refreshing Harvest, you don't really run out of mana anyway, so it doesn't make a ton of sense to run this. And plus, when you're below 50% mana, then you get Damage Bonus, which is like a little bit of a benefit, but not super significant since you don't usually play this build for a ton of damage. Uh, in terms of Ice Gauntlet Tree, this is the tree that is almost always run. There's like a few different trees that people run. So that tree that I just showed is one that's really popular. Uh, one that some people have been trying out is something like this. People don't used to, people used to do Ultimate Chill and put more stuff in the left passes. Ultimate Chill got gutted and nerfed. Uh, if you don't know what that is about, then please see one of my other videos where I talk about this. Uh, but... The debate on Ice Scotland at the moment is like, where does this last perk go? If you block, blocking stamina is really good. If you don't block at all, then I usually put it into Critical Frost. Uh, energized Critical is okay too. You're not typically critical. You're not typically uh, playing with your Ice Scotland a ton, and out like you're not using it unless you're breaking siege. In terms of autos, because the Void Gauntlet autos will give you cooldown reduction. That cooldown reduction turns into abilities versus Ice Gauntlet tends to not be as valuable to stay on. That being said, Ice Gauntlet is really important in this build and it is a carry rule just because of Ice Shower itself. Ice Shower prevents people from going through them, gives your army haste, gives you ult charge if you have Deadly Frost, which is something that you should be running if you're running this build. Deadly Frost, if in budget versions, is usually slotted on weapon. That's almost always better than Unending Thaw. In IGVG specifically, there is basically no reason to run Unending Thaw anymore unless you're trying to pad. Uh, so if you really care about the Lucid Leaderboards, I guess you could run Unending Thaw, but Deadly Frost leads to more Ice Showers. Those Ice Showers actually give you Ult Charge now. Uh, it reduces the cooldown of the Ice Shower itself, which is the best ability on the Void Gauntlet. 
Uh, there's not a lot to hate about it, and uh, typically people, you're placing storms on top of clumps, and people aren't actually running out of them super often, unless you're in a backline protector kill squad sort of role, but at that point you're usually on BBIG, not VGIG. Uh, so Blunderbuss is typically slotted more with the Unending Thaw Ice Gauntlets at this point, and Deadly Frost tends to be better. There is another setup that people run sometimes where they will look to maximize the refreshing. Like there is a semi meme like nine refreshing build where you put Deadly Frost on armor and you run uh, the Ice Gauntlet that drops from Dynasty, which has refreshing on it, Keen and Vicious, which is not a great Ice Gauntlet on its own, but the refreshing really helps. Uh, because it applies to everything, and then you get the Deadly Frost on armor, and you basically only lose, like, 5%, and you gain 2.5% to all your other abilities, so it, it works out to be a little bit better to run it that way, but not much better. I think, optimally, you want to run about 5 to 7 refreshing. You don't really want it on amulet. It's good to have it on ring. Invigorated Punishment doesn't really do anything. I'm probably going to look to find a different ring actually for this war um that's coming up but uh, earring or, yeah let me look real quick so like on ring what you're looking for uh you're looking for keen you're looking for hardy if you're in heavy if you're in medium you don't care about hardy and then at that point you're looking for refreshing or you're looking for uh refreshing ward if you're in heavy refreshing ward is not typically a good perk to have anymore but it is a soft counter to bb's which is why it sometimes runs still so I'm probably going to run this one for this war, because it has the Keen, which I want for my Void Gauntlet. And Champion's Amulet is free, so it's good. Uh, Invigorative Punishment is typically not a must-have for IGVG, since you're playing for your abilities, but it's a good perk to have if you need an option. In terms of what you're looking at gems, this is a little bit off from what I normally run. Uh, let me... I think I just need to do this, and then it's good. That's not quite good, but it's it's pretty close. Uh, so I have it here. I'll, I'll put gems in this like after this and try to figure this out exactly. But I'm pretty sure it's just this moonstone needs to become a onyx, and then I am set for my normal normal split, or like w one or two other things. But what you would typically run for gems, twenty slash is like a solid. 10 physical, because you're trying to have some protection versus bows, and you will be on the outskirts and medium with this build, usually. Uh, about 17 fire, a little bit above that is fine, so this is 19.5, so I have a little bit more elemental than I normally would have. And then, you, you, the reason why you tend to do fire ward is because blunderbuss is very popular in NA. If you if blunderbuss are not slotted on your region, you don't really need to do this fire ward, but fire ward tends to be the most damaging elemental thing, so it's good to ward against it. And then I just dump the rest into Ellie, but it's not a ton into Ellie, because Ellie's not super impactful for most players. Or Ellie resist is not. And heavy, not a ton changes. The, the main thing with heavy is refreshing and refreshing ward are both kind of fine, because you, you're going to be taking a lot of hits, so refreshing ward will actually get value. Versus in, in medium, people... You're typically playing the edge of clump and not trying to get involved in fights, so it's not as important. In terms of what alt you're using, uh, there are debates with it. I would typically say you either go vines or you go stone form. Uh, there's an argument for both. I think both are very good. I, th I think our the conclusion my company is at at this point is vines is good if you're in heavy. Vines is good on attack if you're in medium, but if you're on or, sorry, Vines is good if you're in defense and medium, but on attack you want a stone form. Or, basically, both of them are very good. It's just if you if you want to be in a spot where you want to live a little bit better, stone form is good. But if you're in a spot where you need to support your bruises more and need to help them trade for kills, then Vines is good. Which is why it's typically run a little bit more than stone form, but stone form still gets a lot of value. And if I'm playing this build on point, then I'm heavily considering stone form not only for the survivability, but because it will my screams will not get interrupted, my ice showers will not get interrupted, my oblivions will not get interrupted, and overall it makes the game a lot easier to play. So that's the the big things with Ice Gauntlet Void Gauntlet in terms of how it's built today. Some like older things that if, you, if you're newer to the build, if you cast an ability while you're in your ice, it will reduce the cooldowns. If you look at my lower right hand screen. Uh, there are other a few things that are important to know. If you 
break out of your ice gauntlet, which or out of your ice block, which is not pressing the ability it again, but to press primary fire while you're in it, then you'll activate this cleansing. Well, the cleansing tomb will always activate, but it will activate strengthening tomb, which will give you an extra fortify on top of the defiant freeze, which is nice. So that's something that's noteworthy. And then otherwise, most of your kit is playing for the void gauntlet. With void gauntlet, typically you are looking to drop oblivion into scream into orb or scream into oblivion into orb there are some circumstances where it's kind of fine to throw orb first which i think differentiates me from other people that play this build but there are sometimes there's a big clump that you can't quite get to it that's just sitting right there and i i personally think it's fine to orbit and then just go for your classic scream into like oblivion because then you'll get your next orb up, and when you get your next orb up, then you can get the cooldown reduction for all your other abilities. And that cooldown reduction will kind of cycle, and it doesn't matter as much of how picky you are with the order, in my opinion. That being said, in an ideal circumstance, if you can play, if you have the opportunity to do it, screaming into orb into oblivion tends to be best, or the most greedy thing is to oblivion scream into orb. I like scream orb obliv, because sometimes you can strip people like cleanse when they do that like they'll pop a cleanse pot and oblivion has been bugged in the past and i believe still does strip the cleanse pot but it's like something that you can't really test you just kind of see it from wars and you get a feel for it um and what that allows you to do if you're able to strip that cleanse pot buff then you're able to vine some right after and just keep them in place and they won't be able to play the game and they'll probably die to your bruisers so yeah that's all i have for void gauntlet ice gauntlet the the biggest thing is just playing for your bruisers i think the exact armor specs don't matter a ton but with this build you are typically shooting to have no more than eight deaths per war and usually on the line of about five to eight deaths per war uh, if you play the eu variant i know they typically have about three to five deaths per war which is a little bit lower than na but na igbgs have to kind of hold the, the gates a little bit more and they're a little bit more pressured out but they get a little bit more value with the abilities. Like the assists in NA are a little bit higher than EU, but the deaths are also a little bit higher than EU. So it's a bit of a trade-off in terms of what you want, if you want more cooldowns or if you want to live a little bit better. But you just have to rem remember the perks that you're playing for. With Ice Gauntlet, any time you cast an ability, you're gaining Fortify. With Void Gauntlet, if you cast Scream, you are gaining a ton of Fortify. But if you swap off of the ability or that weapon then you will lose that so if you cycle too fast between your weapons you will lose your fortifies but if you juggle them well you can maintain fortify and get value off your other weapon there used to be like some greedy combos that people would do that would like involve like a scream to dropping like ice shower into like a heavy route and you can do that at times now but i'd say it's a lot less common usually you're playing for the void gauntlet tree and then you're playing for the ice gauntlet tree and a lot of the times ice shower is used to trap bruisers in which is part of the kind of playing around people. Like, you don't want to play in the clump, you want to play on the edge of the clump, and if I know that my team is, say, pushing this way, and their bruiser is standing, like, right here at this edge, then instead of just dropping an ice shower right in front, then I'm going to try to circle around them and drop the ice shower behind, so when my bruiser goes in, they will their enemy will get trapped on this, and they will just be easy pickings for my bruiser. So there's a lot of stuff like that where you have to read how where people are either moving up or backing up from and then making plays off of that with ice gauntlet void gauntlet i think this is a generally really easy class to play but requires a lot of communication the the hard part about the class is the game sense knowing like when to go in mechanics to living like a lot of the times you see people that just spam dodges in this build i'll, I'll go into medium because that's more common so like you don't want to just spam dodges with this build at all you almost always want to dodge into hop, into dodge into hop. And then from like when you get distance and you drop the ice shower, I like to do U-shaped ice showers because then I can get the haste from it and it traps people that are behind me. So I kind of get double the benefit. And then from there, you, you're able to live very effectively. In heavy, you can't play for that dodge as much, but you're inherently more tanky, so you're just able to absorb a lot of that damage and use the dodge mostly for uh, anti-CC chains versus just to position so that's the the major difference there but you are plenty tanky and medium you're, you're tank and you're very tanky and heavy it's just a personal preference which is played and i don't think there's much of a debate anymore like it doesn't matter which one you are playing as long as you're getting value and light people is it used to be played a lot but it's not being played anymore because the 
light nerfs where you actually get hit and then you can't run away make it very detrimental to play light in this build because you have to be so close to get value with your abilities. So I'd recommend sticking to medium or heavy with it if you are going to play it. Uh, there's typically about 6 to 10 of these builds slotted per war because it is the best build to support bruisers. But make sure you're playing with your bruisers and not just playing solo because if you're playing solo you're getting so much less value than you typically would with IGBG. That's all I have with this. Uh, good luck in your wars and your OPRs. I would not play this build in 3v3. I would not play this build in duels, but it is a very strong OPR build that will carry, and it is a very strong war build. Uh, if you are looking for a 3v3 build that's similar to this, I think if you throw on a Void Blade, you inherently will just be better. Void Blade is not played in wars, mostly because you don't have grit, and you are able to get easily staggered, and it basically is just worse than a lot of other weapons in the game but yeah oblivion or void gauntlet has the most army utility value in the game out of any weapon so if you could find a way to make it work with other classes it's very good it's just being run with ice gauntlet right now because there's so much emphasis on holding gates which is part of the reason why people are not able to win many wars on attack because ice gauntlet is so good at holding gates and that's all i have for this one i will see you guys in the next video